Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. In this video, I'll be creating this maps type pin and label with Photoshop. I'm going to do it using shapes, and the great thing about shape layers is that they are vector based. This means that the shape, angles and curves are determined through mathematics and not through pixel size. So we can size this up and down and there'll be no loss to the quality. OK, here we go. I've already chosen my image and it's all ready to go. I just need to add the pin. Let's make the pin first. This is, at its simplest form, a circle and a triangle. I'm going to go and get the ellipse tool. Here we go. And make sure that I'm creating a shape. And I can see that I'm doing it here in the menu bar. To draw the circle, I'll click in the image and I get this dialog box. I can type in exactly the size that I want. And for this, I want 775 pixels by 775 pixels. And for me, that's going to be just about right. Now, depending on the size of your image, this may need to be a little bit more or a little bit less. I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, my circle appears. Now, I'd like that in red. So in the menu, I'll click on the swatch. And I'm going to choose this icon here, which opens the colour picker. Now, I already know the colour I want, so I'm going to type that in. It's actually 255. Then I'm going to press Tab, 65, and then 65. And I get this nice ready pinky colour. OK, I click OK. And there we have it. Now, I notice I've got a black line going running around the outside there, so I'll click on the stroke, and I'll say No Stroke. And there we have it. Good. Now we need to make it look three-dimensional. And I'm going to use layer styles for that. In the layer next to where it says Ellipse 1, I'll double-click it. And in here, I'm looking for Inner Shadow, just there. If I click on that, I'll change the angle to around minus 40. Let me take off Global Light. Minus 40. And then I'm going to have a distance of 90, choke of 0, and a size of 150. And that looks nice for this image. I'll click OK. Now these figures, again, will depend on the resolution and size of your own image, and the size of your ellipse, of course. It's not quite right as yet. I'm going to go non-vector for this. Sorry, I lied a little bit. I'll grab a brush. Here we go, my brush tool. And a size of 250 works well for this. And I want a hardness of 0%. And I need my foreground colour to be white. So I'll press D for default colours and X to swap them over. So I know definitely white is my foreground colour. I'll make a new layer. And then I'm going to come up to my little vector here. And I'm going to click once in the top left. And there we have it, a nice 3D pinhead. OK, now let's make the point. And for this, I'm going to use the pen tool. So here we go, get the pen. And I'm going to make sure I'm creating it as a shape again. And all I need is to click at the top, click down the bottom, and then click at the top again. And there we have our shape. Now I need to make it look rounded. Again, I'll go up to the menu bar. Now those using CS5 or earlier will have to do this bit using a gradient overlay in the layer styles, I'm afraid. OK, so here I want the fill to be a gradient. So I'll click the third icon along. This time I want the angle to be 0, the gradient to be reflected, the scale to be about 180 for me here, and a line with the layer should already be checked. OK, good. Just click off of that, and I just need to drag this layer underneath. Now let's make the shape for the label, and fortunately for us, Photoshop comes with pre-made shapes to help us. Back to our shapes, this time choose Custom Shape Tool. 
I want to see all my shapes. So if I click this downward pressing arrow and then click on the gear and choose all and OK, all my shapes should appear. Now the shape I want for this is a speech bubble. And it's this one here, sort of the long thin one. I'll click on that and then click on my downward facing arrow to close it. And again, I can just click anywhere to add my shape. This time I want to go to the maximum I can do in this dialog box of 3000 by 645 and click OK. And there it is. I'm going to go and get my move tool and so I can just move this on. Let me just turn off my pins for now. Let's move shape 2 up to the top. Now this is a good start, but I don't want the curly bit of this speech mark here. I want it to be angled down, like a straight down point. So if I click and hold on the pen tool, you can see down the bottom I've got this tool here, Convert Point Tool. If I click on the path, you can see all the points that make up this shape. With my Convert Point Tool, I can click on the anchor point here to change it from a curved anchor point to a straight one. I'll do the same for the two anchor points at the top of the curved point. One there and one there. Now I'll get the white arrow tool and I can move these anchor points to where I want them. I'm going to hold shift down to constrain my movements to a straight line. And that looks great. Next I'll go and get the black arrow tool, the path selection. I click on the path so all the points are now highlighted. Right click and free transform path and then right click again and choose flip horizontal and now my point is the right end so click the tick and I'm happy with that my point here doesn't look too good though so let's go and get my white arrow tool again my direct selection tool and I can just pull these ones in to where I want it good that looks better now I need to make this look right if I click on the Shape Tool icon, I can see the Shapes attributes again. This time the fill wants to be a gradient running at an angle of minus 90. So minus 90. I'd also like it to be linear this time. But I need that white to be a dark grey. So I double click the white square and choose a dark grey from the colour picker. I already know what colour I'm after, so I can type it in again. 80, 80, and tab one more time, and 80. I click OK. I want a stroke this time, solid, colour, and black. Three points is good, but I want the stroke on the outside of this. Clicking the downward facing arrow next to this icon here will give me my align icon. And if I click on that, I get a choice. I can have it inside the path, on the path, or as I'll choose, outside the path. I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer down to around about 95%. Next, let's make the car symbol. I'll choose a rounded rectangle this time. And I'm going to click again anywhere and choose 320 by 320. And click OK. Now let's move that into position with the Move tool. And this time the gradient wants to be light greens. So let's click on my shape tool again, fill, 
and this time I want a gradient but greens double click and this time it's at 0, 180 and 125 click OK and the second one wants to be 0, 225, 170 and click OK the stroke wants to be white and a stroke of about 10 pixels would be good here OK, let's add the car this time. Now the shape on the Maps app looks remarkably similar to a shape that comes with Photoshop. So that's good news for us. Let's go and grab a custom shape tool. And then again, click the downward facing arrow. And we can find the car here. There it is. Click the downward facing arrow to close that. Now I can drag the car out. And I'm going to hold shift down to constrain it and I could use a space bar should I need to just move this around to get it where I want it to be. About there looks good, let's go a little bit bigger and there we have it. This shape wants no stroke, no stroke and the fill color wants to be slightly different, let's go and go on there and this time we want 210, 250 and 240 and click OK and there's my car that's the car done all we need now is the arrow on the right hand side and this can be a little bit fiddly let's go and get the ellipse tool this time and click this time I want 320 by 320 should be the same size as our box there let's click OK move that into position and I'm going to put it there and then let go of my mouse and then shift and click to drag it across I know then it's in a straight line with it good now the fill is a gradient so let's go back to our shape and the fill is a gradient and this time the colors are on this end we want 15 10 and 130 and on the other end we want 70, 65 and 170. Again it's very subtle. We then need to pull these two points in so the transition between the two happens in a much smaller area. So pull that one up, and that one down and there we have a nice transition. Let's make that a little bit more central. Whoops, daisy. Get rid of that one. Okay, that's looking good stroke again wants to be about 10 pixels and white good now the right facing arrow and this is the tricky bit let's go and grab a custom shape again to get us started and the shape I'm looking for is this empty diamond here click on that click the downward facing arrow and then click somewhere in the document and this time I want 250 by 250. I'll click OK. The fill is a solid white. Solid white. There's no stroke. And there we have it. Let's move that into position. I'm going to use the move tool just to position that in the center of the circle and then scooch it over to the left a little bit. OK, now comes a tricky bit. Uh, I'm going to hold down Control, which is Command if you're using a Mac, and then click on the icon of the Ellipse 2 layer. And that gives me this circle. Let me zoom in so we can see what we're doing a bit better. So you can see now that I've got a selection made of the blue circle. If I go and get another selection tool, I can then move the selection across. I'm going to hold Shift down again and move across to the right until my selection cuts through the top and bottom of my diamond and then just nudge it across using the arrow keys just one or two pixels good then I need to come down to the bottom of the layers palette and click add new layer mask and there we have our shape and you'll notice that it has very nice rounded edges 
good. Let's go and get our move tool and we can just make sure that that's somewhere in the middle and zoom back out again. Control zero will fit it all on screen. And there we have it. Finally, let's add the name of the place with the type tool. Aerial's good. Bold is good. 75 points works well for me on this image and I want it to be white. Click anywhere and type in what you want. For me, it's Anglesey Abbey. A-N-G-L-E-S-E-Y Abbey. Good. Get the move tool and I can move that into place. Let's turn back on our pin. Okay. Now, I want to move the pin all as one job lot. So I'm going to just make sure I know which one's which. There's the pin and it's highlight. So I want that one and that one. I'm going to hold Control or Command and that one. And then holding Shift and Alt and then clicking on this folder. I can make a new group and I'm going to call that pin. And now I can move that as a job lot. I can even control T and transform it together as well, holding shift down, of course. There we go. That's looking better. And I'm going to use the same trick here. Shift and click to highlight all the layers that make up our label. Shift, Alt and click on the group. And we'll call this label, label. And now that's all together. We can move those around. There we have it. Now what would look good here is a shadow. What also would look good is if this pin bit was a bit more central, I think. So let's move that. Let's move the pin just over, make it a bit more central. I'm also not really liking the, uh, the gradient. So let's go and put that right as well. Um, okay reflected 180 I've got that too much I think maybe we have might even want to swap these two over a little bit that's better there we go that's much better good okay I'll click somewhere off of that one that's better okay now I'd like a shadow I'm going to control and click on the head of the pin and then shift and control that's command on the Mac and click on the icon of the pin. Then let's go into my label and the only one I need is this shape too. So again, shift, control or command and click. And now I've got everything highlighted. Let's close all that. Let's make a new layer above label. And I can fill that with black. So D for default colors brings black to the foreground. Alt and backspace will fill it with black. Control D to deselect. Now I can control T to transform. And that's looking good. Um, let's lay it down. Using my pointer here, if I hold down control, you'll notice it turns into a white arrow. It means I can change these independently of each other. And I can kind of wiggle it down to get it how I want it. Let's wiggle it up a bit there. Then take this one I've let go of control just to elongate it a bit and move it into place. So control again just to wiggle this around. Okay, happy with that. that. Sting this one down a little bit. That's better. Almost following the line of the grass there. Let's get that lined up again with the point at the bottom and click the tick. And let's go to blur, a filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. For me, 20 works well. I'll click OK. And then I'm going to bring the opacity of this right down to, let's say, somewhere around 40%. And there we have it. We're all done. We've made this Maps app type pin to put into our photographs. I'm Eric Reno. Thank you very much for watching. This is a video for tipsquirrel.com. I'll see you next time.